Saturday night, the Aztecs went into the valley and tamed the Bulldogs. The Aztecs win 73 to 41 and now position themselves in a good spot. These last three final Mountain West season games of winning the conference. They need some help. They need some aid. They need somebody to slip up. And there was definitely a few slip ups this weekend. Joining me are my two co hosts. You know him. You love him. You, well, you can't can't really stop him. You can only hope to contain him. And, the fiend uh, of a microphone. I'm the microphone I'm the mic, fiend. I'm the microphone fiend. <laughs> What's up, guys? How you doing? <laughs> How are you doing? How are you doing, I'm, fiend? I'm doing well. Easy win last night. It was fantastic, mm-hmm. man. We don't. It's very tough to get easy wins on the road in conference, and so I am just. Cruising along. Easy money, easy money. He went from East County to East Tahoe. I'm liking the fit today, man. I like that hat and the, the little SD on the corner, dude. It's fresh. It's Mr. Mike! Mike! <laughs> Mike Tortolot, how are you? What's up, guys? Yeah, that win last, last night was uh, easy like Sunday morning, you know? So um, it was good. Yeah, I got this hat from uh, the golf coach. Uh, a while back when I was a member at San Diego Country Club. So Ryan, I can't remember his last name, but he was a good dude, so he gave some hats. So it's it's a it's it's a one off. So but yeah, great win last night and um ready for the home stretch here. Very fresh. I like those white ones, man. I gotta give me a white one like that. Sick. Yeah, Sick. they're nice. As far as Fresno goes, I mean, they, you had guys guys to... they had three starters out. I mean, you know, I mean, like that was just Inevitable. I mean, they were. Yeah. They're not. Playing. They're, they're not. It was like. Not I mean, thing. it was like playing. Was, someone said this last last night in one of the chats. They said it was like playing one of the NIA teams, NAIA teams that we played at the beginning of the year. It's yeah. like St. Catharines of Fresno last night. I mean, they were. Yeah, they were undermanned and they didn't have a chance against mm-hmm. us so 73 to 41 73 to 41 was that yeah. really the final score that was but the halftime score we were up what 30 right 42 yeah. 16 or 42 12 or something yeah but yeah they i mean two of their big men were out and i think one other guy was out so it's like what well, you know it it was great to get the dub you know what i mean but like now if we can take care of San Jose stay at home which not good what we should and then get a week off to i, to, I bro I am not looking forward to playing fucking UNLV. They've won seven of eight. They're on fire, <laughs> dude. They've yeah. now clicked. You know what I mean? So that's – I said it. Like that. That's a team – all the teams are good, but that's a team that could catch fire and just run through that Mountain West tournament. It's still it. the vacation home. I know, but still. But I, get, still I feel like we said that every year. We I, give over the keys. I feel like we said that every year with UNLV. Hey, they could go and run, and then they do some stupid-ass shit in the tournament, and they <laughs> fucking lose. Do you know what I mean? Like they, that's L-O-L-V. Yeah, so, but um, hey, man, we're we're there. I I don't know if we can. I mean, we we got Boise in front of us. Utah State's got a pretty easy road. I mean, they're gonna you know New Mexico the last game of the season is really the only one that might be troublesome for them. But can we can we knows. talk about New Mexico? Can we talk about New Mexico losing at home to Air Force? Like, how do you do you talk about us playing Fresno State and them looking like an NAIA team? I thought when we played Air Force, it felt like this was just not fair to even put Air Force on the court with us. I know they have a couple nice players, but top to bottom, you look at their players, and I'm like, they don't have NIL. They don't really do the transfer portal much thing, uh, if they even do at all, right? And you just saw them, and you're like, dude, there's no way these guys can match up. I feel bad for them. And then they go into the pit and totally take New Mexico down. Like, I did not see that coming, man. No, we did. They're 18 half point favorites. So what does that mean but, for New Mexico? What does that mean, New Mexico? I mean, they're pretty much – they got to win the tournament. No, you know what's crazy? Down. You know what's crazy is like right. their net ranking only dropped from 20 to 26. Yeah. So you know how we <laughs> talked about last episode about, the you know, the, the tide of the Mountain West lifting all boats? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that's sort of what's keeping afloat New Mexico from wow. dropping down so far because of their wins against – Nevada and against us and Colorado State and and Utah State, that strength of the conference is keeping all of our boats up instead of, you know, so you have one bad loss. You're not 
dropping off a cliff like I thought that they would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, so yeah. I, it's a good chance. I mean, they cannot lose now at home to Fresno State, but they could pro possibly lose on the road to Boise State and Utah State and still get in the tournament. Wow. Yeah, they still have some big games in front of them, and they have a bye. So, yeah, I mean, they hey, you know, they they Boise State and Utah State both away. But I mean, they still have a chance. I just think it's one of those games where it's like everything went perfect for Air Force and everything went wrong for. New Mexico. It, it looked like terrible. a lot of lazy defense to me, man. They were it's not closing late. out those three point shooters. They really, I think they just overestimated them big time and Air Force made them pay. Yeah. And the Air Force hit Ooh. shots. They hit a lot yeah. of threes. Yeah. But, you know, if that's just so so, so, you don't have to be the best team on the court. You've got to be the best team that day. Yeah. yeah. Or the best yeah. team, yeah. In, you know what I'm trying to say. So <laughs> that's the well, you... March. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, UNLV leapfrog New Mexico in the standings right behind Nevada, then us, then Boise, then Utah State. Wow, that loss to Utah State's stinging right now. But Boise State, they're on a roll as well, man. They won three in a row. They, they, they're looking like they're peaking and getting a little tough, a little tougher. I think the X factor is Max Rice, man. I mean, it has to be right. He's such a dangerous player when he's on. It's like he'll shoot it from anywhere the most awkward, unorthodox shots, and he'll make them in. And they're a tough team. They're a physical team. That's, uh, I think that's one to really look out for as we get in this final stretch. They'll be interesting to see because they end. The last three games are hosting New Mexico, hosting Nevada, and then they play us in Viejas. Mm. That's a, that's, those are tough games, man, even though yeah. two of them are home. So th there's a lot. Uh, we were like, I think we were like five or six. After the New Mexico, this Nevada game on Friday night, Nevada won. Obviously, they took said one extra game or whatever. But we went from like I was like looking, at it, I was like we were fifth or sixth in the standings. But then after the games played on last night, we went up to three. That's just crazy how how big it, how how much it changes. Shit, you know Colorado State is seventh in the conference and they're twenty second in the country as of yesterday. It's crazy, dude. This it's is gonna be a great, mountains. yeah. It's gonna be a great Mountain West tournament, man. Like, and whoever wins it is gonna get some big quad one wins. Yeah, huge. This could be the first year that someone gets three quad one wins in a Mountain West Conference tournament, and it's probably the best and most deep that I've seen since I've been watching, you know, Mountain West Conference tournament games. Yeah, easily, hundred percent. It's a fun end of the season. Like this is, you know, we want to. I want to win every game I can't we can but like just to see the other games and just see the the transitoriness of the of the standings is you know I don't know man like this is gonna be wild I just want I what I what I want obviously I want us to win all of our games coming up you know San Jose State UNLV <laughs> um <clears throat> I just want a chance though I want a chance against Utah State <laughs> Or not well, you know, to to yeah, to, to win the Mountain West championship regular season, you know, to have Utah State lose, trip up in one of these games, and lose a game, just to give us that opportunity to play for that regular season championship mm -hmm. at home against Boise. That's what I want to see. You want that final game to mean something, to be have it all on the line. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and then get rush the court again <laughs> and watch us cut down some nets and kiss some rings. Mm, yes, It'll yes. Fun, win, man. win, 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 win. Cut down nets. Cut down nets. Absolutely. Do we have I'm anything to say good. about San? Do we have anything to say about San Jose State Tuesday night, eight p.m. in Viejas? I mean, boy, they are. They've won two games. Is that right? Two games in conference. We better not lose that game. They almost beat us at home. Best. That was in the beginning of the year, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we better bring our best because not just because we we want to bring our best because we should. Honestly, is you still want to get more continuity with the team and keep playing better, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like Heidi is Heidi is starting to play better and better each game. You know what I mean? Like it, we're gonna need him. Micah looked a little bit more authoritative last night than he had before. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what was going on that game before, but it didn't look like Micah. So he did. He looked more like him yesterday. You know what I mean? And then um, Darian is. I mean, I think Darian's going to be the spark plug for us for for a run, man. 
like you know what i mean like if he can do what he does and then jane jane i mean shit, man if, if he hits up 21 and 11 or whatever the next four five six games i just think it would be hard for him them to not be all american all american yeah i just i just think it would be difficult for them not to put him in there because he's one of only three guys averaging what was you see the stat last night um what was it it was um yeah, highest field goal percentage. He's third in the country at fifty six point four percent with a minimum three hundred attempts. I mean, he just he's and he's so deadly at those mid range jumpers, man. Like he's almost automatic. Yeah. You know, so it, it's just you know it's crazy. I mean, we and we the wildest thing is we have we've allowed the lowest opponent field goal percentage in the in the conference at forty point nine percent. So when yeah, we lose the game, that. let's be. It's when we lose a game, it's because we're not, we're just not playing well. We're just not shooting the ball well. So the defense is still there. If we ratchet up the defense a little bit more, man, it's, um, I don't know how far we would go in the tourney, but like Fiend says, you just want an opportunity, man. You, just, you want an opportunity. And that's what that bummed me out about that 1920 team. You know, they didn't even get a chance. You just want yeah, a they chance. Had it all. Was, oh, they could, yeah, they could have gone to the final four, but we don't never know, man. Like they just didn't, they didn't even get a chance to do it that's, that team had it what, all yeah it's like when you look back on your life and you regret the things you didn't do more than the things you did do so it's you know that's that's the the antithesis of that you know 1920 what could have happened if Kemba didn't flop what would happen to that team but they still think we would have went on to beat Arizona but we didn't and they won the national championship so whatever well this team has a chance we know they're going to be in the tournament we we already know it's just yep. where what seating what matchups What'd you say about the? Well, what'd you say in, in the beginning of uh, our conversation about the, the projection matchups? Oh, so I was looking at CBS Sports. I kind of look at all of them. It's all projectatory. I don't know if that's a word, but we're gonna make it a word. So Jerry Palm has us right now as a three seed in Spokane. Okay. His projection is we play Oakland. Where my Oakland. Parents yeah, where uh, Micah Parrish played before. And you know, I've always said that the NCAA, yeah, they want to go the best teams, but they also like those storylines. Yeah. And then if, say that were to play out, the 6-11 matchup in Spokane, TCU. TCU, okay, Jayden, the Jaden Ledee, Jayden Ledee. Yeah. connection. I, yeah, so if you start, if you know, I think there's a lot of, of manipulation of hey we're gonna let's let's put we have a group of teams but where do they fit in the puzzle hey we have a storyline here we have a storyline it's because it's all media man like how many billions of dollars yeah. of stuff so yeah. you know it's it's like look at last year I don't think Nevada should have been in the NCAA tournament but they get to play Arizona and that was all like three or four of their guys from Nevada the year before so that 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 made sense to me even though I don't know if it made sense for them to be in it but we'll, we'll see I no mean a lot of things, no you no, made our projection. No, because that we, because they would have U of A in the West. Okay, all right. I would I would think because they're they're going to be a two seed probably unless they just keep winning and stuff. So not they until have like here. Sweet Sixteen or something like that again. I, I don't know. Yeah, because they have us in the East right now, oh, even though we started Spokane. Right. So I, who knows, man? You know what I mean? Like it'll be interesting to see what happens, dude. Like there's a lot. I look how much can change in the next two weeks, and there's going to be some crazy shit going on in conference tournaments. Yeah. Like, what happens if UNLV wins the Mount West tournament? They're in. <laughs> then how many teams do you get in? You know, what I mean, just speculatory wise, but like, there's there's always crazy stuff going on, man. You never know, dude. Crash. That's what I love about. It. That's what I love about this time of year, man. Bid stealers. Wild. Beware yeah. the bid stealers. And I, I I really feel if we can win out, if we win the next three games, we have three games. Yeah, three games, and then we win the Mount West. So we go six and up, not gonna win the next six games. I don't is a two seed within reach. I don't know. I think a solid three is. Well, I think yeah. we are gonna have some uh, more analytic minds, some more metric thinking minds, some mathematical minds coming into the show in the near future yeah. to take a look at some of these brackets and how the mathematics line up. But, you know, I'm, I'm interested to hear what they have to say, these guests we're going to have on pretty soon, because to me, it's more the storylines, like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Like, like you can't, you can't necessarily compute those storylines and the heart of players and the matchups and, you know, who wins, but uh, it'll be interesting to hear what they have to say. 
it's two aspects it's two sides of the coin you know i mean you have yeah. to take that yeah. in and then you take the other side because at the end of the day this is entertainment it's entertainment yeah. so you have to have that involved but i'm definitely interested to see how that that I, i'm interested to, to, to listen to that because it's um that's fiend's beast but i, I i've always enjoyed listening to it because it's just definitely curious i'm not a mathematician i'm not a math surgeon you know what i mean so Matt um, Surgeon. Matt <laughs> I do like it because I know that's his that's his thing, and I've learned a lot from him because it's like to me, it's like whatever. But wait a second, wait a second. You enjoy yeah. listening to it, but you'll put up your your newspaper or your uh, book when I'm talking about it. No, 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 no. That was when you were being introduced. Not when you're talking about the the stats. I put the highlights magazine, which is a great magazine, especially for kids. So when you we, you were being introduced because you said don't put up the newspaper for house you know or you should put the newspaper uh, up for okay, house and turn okay. around but it, I, not when you're explaining the stats i mean I, do i zone out and think about like what i'm gonna do later yeah maybe or, i'm just kidding <laughs> but no it's interesting to hear man because it, it is definitely it's definitely a part of it of sports now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well we'll find out soon enough only three games left I want to thank you guys for joining us for this little short episode, just kind of updating what happened this weekend. Hope everybody enjoy their weekend. Be safe. And uh, there'll be plenty more coming down as we get closer to March. Guys, let's wrap it up. Go enjoy your Sundays. Go enjoy your Sundays. Whatever you got going, whatever you got cooking, more pizzas, more, mm -hmm. uh, more, uh, more, more uh, East Tahoe things. I don't know. Yes. Well, no, that's fine, man. Yeah, enjoy the Sundays. Yeah, go, um, go Aztecs. Beat, uh, beat San Jose State on Tuesday. Let's go, go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs.